<laughs> Grand Rising and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I just feel called to talk about five different ways to prepare mentally for your home birth or for my home birth and things that have helped me in the past and things that I feel called to um, work through and work with again. I do want to start off and say that once again, I do not want to complain or nag, but honor this pregnancy in comparison to my first pregnancy. This pregnancy has been much more chaotic um, in the external world and things around me. My business has changed. People have come in and out. Um, I've had to adapt a lot. I have a toddler who's super, super active and there just has been a lot of changes and I'm a person who likes, I'm a fixed energy. So I like consistency and um, because of the things that I've been doing in my personal life, there has been a lot of external changes which has manifested into not as much as a peaceful regimented routine um, that I was in in some of the previous videos you guys have probably watched about my beautiful pregnancy experience um, the first time around. This experience has been just as beautiful. It's just taught me to surrender and flow more. To be honest, a lot of the things that I will be talking about in this video, I've done in the last few weeks. So I don't want anybody to feel like it's too late in their journey to implement these things because they can still be impactful with mindfulness and intention. So I first want to talk about breathing. Breathing has been super big in this pregnancy. Um, whenever I feel frustrated or I feel like I'm losing control, I always have to remember to surrender. And in my first pregnancy, I remember how impactful breathing was when I was having my surges and when I was having my contractions. Contractions to me um, contract with your body. Surges empower your body. So I would say I had 90% surges and I had 10% of contractions. When I was mindful about my breathing, when I was relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my lips, not clenching my butt cheeks through some of those um, difficult or uncomfortable times in my contractions, um, I was able to surrender with my body, listen to my baby and flow. Ways that I like to breathe before I'm actually in the birthing process is just by breathing in and breathing out and imagining the breath expanding space in my womb for my baby, imagining the breath um, creating space for my baby, imagining that the breath is giving more oxygen to my baby. Different affirmations kind of come in as I'm breathing and my baby kind of guides me on um, the affirmations as well. But I think one of the biggest underrated things is our breath. And with every breath, we have an option to surrender and deepen our trust in our body and our baby. And I think it's really important to practice that before because there's not really awareness of what you do when you have a contraction, whether you clench like this or you squeeze. So if you can do something uncomfortable or challenging, um, I know some people will hold ice in their hand and try to breathe without like, going like this because they're cold. Um, there's different mental exercises that you can do. Whatever way that you can just surrender and breathe and imagine the breath going to your baby is the number one um, way for me um, to kind of get into balance and into flow and in preparation for a beautiful, easy, effortless home birth. The next thing that I would like to talk about to mentally prepare for a easy, beautiful, Healthy home birth is visualization. My baby has leaned in the last probably two or three months on my right side, laying on my pelvis, um, tightening my hip, and also it manifested in getting um, veins on my leg, which I've never had in my life. And I never had in my first pregnancy. So with this pregnancy, I've had to be a little bit more intentional about imagining my baby getting an alignment, imagining my baby, um, creating more space for himself and me creating more sp space for him in the womb. Um, imagining my placenta in the perfect position, 
imagining him being comfortable, imagining my spine in perfect alignment, and imagining my birth canal um, and my cervix in a place where it's stretching, it's slow, it's lubricated, it's in a place where my baby has minimal work to do and I have minimal work to do. Ways that I like to do that on a physical level is get aligned um, by a chiropractor, which you can watch my chiropractor adjustments in another video. Your spine is connected to your pelvis and your birth canal. So if your spine or your pelvis is out of alignment, then it creates more friction for your baby to move through freely. So chiropractic adjustments are definitely recommended by me. Mentally, without those chiropractic adjustments or uh, um, alongside those chiropractic adjustments, I like to imagine my baby moving in the perfect place at the perfect time. Every time I breathe and do my breathing exercises, I imagine that every breath is creating the perfect space for my baby. I like to move my baby in my mind, have my baby in the perfect alignment, in the perfect position, in the perfect area where he's comfortable, where he's happy, and he feels like he can just be in flow and do what he needs to do. While I was in my birthing process last year, I was able to use what I did before in the birthing process. So every time I had, once again, a contraction and a surge, when I had contractions, I like to visualize that, you know, that the contraction, it was uncomfortable, I honored it, but I also like to visualize what I wanted to go through in the next surge. And whenever I did that and I had a contraction and I was able to consciously know that I had the power to change the next contraction to be a surge, I was able to shift my baby in my mind in the perfect position. I was able to give more breath to my baby and just visualize that my contractions cannot be stronger than me because I am the contraction. And I can also be the surge. Whenever I had an uncomfortable contraction, I was able to honor the lack of surrendering or lack of awareness in my own body and visualize me in the perfect place, in the perfect harmony where my shoulders are relaxed, my baby is relaxed, drinking um, my red raspberry or nettle tea or my date smoothie, knowing that the, the substance that I was drinking, whether that was a smoothie or a tea, was going right to my baby, right to my cervix, creating more space and getting me and my baby in alignment for the next surge to bring my baby here easy, effortlessly, and happily. So the next thing I would like to say are affirmations. The birth playlist that I listened to with my first child was the playlist that I did on my pregnancy journey video. Super powerful, super important to just hear the affirmations by her and her voice is just so powerful. So whether on your birth playlist you listen to affirmations that are pre-recorded by somebody else or pre-recorded by you, um, or just an affirmation that you have for yourself. In my previous birth, I always like to affirm that I'm gonna have an easy and effortless birth. I like to affirm that my baby is gonna get here happy and healthy. My baby is gonna get here in the most aligned divine timing. My baby is going to tell me what to do with my body. My body is going to know what to do naturally. Um, even if I have uncomfortable times, that can change in the next breath or in the next surge. Um, honestly, just whatever you feel called to, just affirm that your body is made for this, that you can do this, it's natural, it's innate, it's your birthright, it's in your lineage, your ancestors, ancestors that you know and ancestors that you don't know will show up and show out for you. I haven't really talked about my birth experience too much, but it was insane. It was the most beautiful ceremony that I could ever be part of. And I literally had a council of ancestors that I have met and ancestors that I do not know that were just surrounding me and covering me um, in power and prayer and in just knowing. So affirm that you have people who are there for you. Affirm that your body is capable and healthy to do this. Affirm that your baby knows what to do and listen to that inner voice. One of the biggest affirmations that I can say um, birth has taught me is the act of surrendering. Um, I feel like there was a time where I was very disconnected uh, to my intuition and in these past four, five, six years, however long it's been, um, I've learned to tap into it more and I'm grateful for that awareness before I gave birth. When I gave birth, the biggest thing I learned was surrender. Surrender to my conscious mind. Surrendering to my conscious mind leaves my subconscious to take over and to know what to do without intervention, without second guessing, without fear and just 
stepping into my innate power. Okay. The next thing that I do to mentally prepare for birth is stretch. Stretching is something physical, but it can also help mentally because when I stretch in several different poses, I imagine me creating space for my baby and creating the most comfortable position for me. I like to think of birth as a marathon and there is in no circumstance where you would go through any type of physical challenge and not prepare until the day of. There's nobody that would run a five mile marathon and say, I know I have a five mile marathon in nine to 10 months, but I'm gonna chill here and rest my body and just relax. And on that day, I'm, I know I'm gonna I'm be able to do it. So the way I like to mentally prepare is I like to stretch my hips. I like to stretch my back. Um, I do have a stretching video that you guys can watch. But I also, like I said, I've been having a lot of um, right tightness and it just made me, I also have been thinking about what that manifests as um, on a, what is the representation of the hip and what that means, that's a whole nother video too. I'm gonna go off a little bit. One thing to consider is if you feel like your body is not aligned, look at what that body part represents, what chakra it represents, what chakra or astrology sign it's connected to and see if you can dive deep into what that might manifest on a mental or spiritual level and why it's manifesting in your body. So for me, it's been my right hip. The right side is masculine. The hip is ruled by Sagittarius. So there's a lot of things that I've kind of computed on my own, in my own self, along with um, other um, birth workers that have kind of helped me work through it. But stretching helps me imagine that every time I stretch, every time I eat something good that's beneficial for my baby and my body, I always think of it as me doing this 10 minutes a day is gonna make my birth process so much easier. Me having the awareness that my body is tight here and working on it on a day-to-day -day basis or a once, and honestly in this case, a once a week basis or a twice a week basis or a very inconsistent basis, even if it's inconsistent, me doing it once a week, once every two weeks, twice a week, whenever I feel called to do it or whenever I consciously remember to do it, um, is still going to help me and my baby when it's time in that birthing process. I like to do this and kind of stretch around and feel where it's tight here. I also like to put my feet outward and stretch down like this, stretch up, stretch back, and just move to the right and to the left. Every time I stretch, I kind of get in flow where I kind of just freestyle and do, do whatever I feel like doing next. On a mental level, when I'm stretching, I always affirm that me stretching my body now is gonna allow my body to be in the most flexible space for me to move freely in birth, whether I'm in the bathtub, on the bed, walking around, leaning on the counter, going in the kitchen. I'm stretching so that I can physically tap into my body during the birthing process so that me and my baby could have the most beautiful, easy and effortless, healthy birthing process. And the last thing to mentally prepare for birth for me is I like to ask myself what birth means to me. An elder told me that every time you give birth, you give birth to a new version of yourself. So in two years, I will be rebirthing myself alongside a child twice within two years. So that's big for me and I, and I would be lying if I said that this time has been completely different. Um, I actually have a little bit more anxiousness. I'm not scared, but it's almost like my son has changed me in so many ways and required so much out of me. Postpartum was very difficult for me. Breastfeeding was difficult for me. I was not prepared for the child that I had on an energy level as far as what he would require of me. He has changed me in the best way possible. I have more discipline. I know how to work in team environments. I have been in flow. I had to learn about um, the connections with breastfeeding and with my breast and tap into more femininity and allowing others to help. And it was a lot while I was in it. Um, I got mastitis, but I think was a manifestation of me not allowing flow into my life. 
and it was a lot. Um, I changed so much in the most beautiful way and it's been super beneficial. But with this child, I'm thinking, okay, that change was uncomfortable while I was in it. What is this child gonna make me change into? Um, and I don't, um, and I'm not, not surrendering to that. It just makes me a little anxious when I think about what this rebirth is gonna do for me and what this child is gonna do for me and what this child is gonna teach me. It's a lot. It's a lot um, to be chosen by a child and it's a huge responsibility, which I'm super grateful for the anointment over my life and over my body to bear life and carry life um, in an easy, beautiful, effortless way. Because this birth, although it has been very different, it has been very beautiful. But what is birth? So I like to think about birth as a rebirth of myself and a birth of a life coming forth that we've created together. And one of the biggest things that I learned in my last birthing process is to surrender and to flow. How I mentally prepare for birth and knowing that is knowing that if I have the capacity now in the busyness, in the chaos, in the changes, with a toddler, with many changes with my body, um, if I have the ability to slow down and to surrender, and to listen, then I'm able to step out of wanting to control and be controlled by the divine in me and the divine in my baby and the divine in the spirits who are watching me. Whenever I think about difficulty, whenever I think about the birth being different, I like to think about birth as the highest test of your ability to surrender and to trust. So how I mentally prepare for that is, like I said, in situations that are not ideal or are not in my plan, I like to acknowledge the frustration or the irritability or just the annoyance that I have, but then know that this may be why, or this, this situation that's not in alignment with my conscious mind or with my ego is not something I really feel like doing or something I feel like being a part of, but I'm gonna flow into it and still have boundaries energetically if that's necessary. But this may get me in a place where I'm more in alignment for birth. When I realized in the first birthing process that birth was the highest form and highest act of surrendering to your conscious mind and tapping in and surrendering to your sub subconscious mind and knowing that everything will be divine, everything will be in flow, you just have to learn how to let go. Oh, that rang. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. But see, look, that was surrendering. Um, those are five different ways that I like to mentally prepare for birth. Birth is the most beautiful experience and I'm honored to do it again. And I'm super, super excited talking about surrender. I thought this baby was gonna come about two weeks ago. And at this point, I'm just like living day to day wild and free and just enjoying this intimate time with my son as the only child that I've bared, just learning more about myself. So for anybody who feels like it's too late to mentally prepare for birth, it's not. I have not been the most consistent. I have not been the most aware or super, super happy. This pregnancy has come with a lot of ups and downs and emotions and changes, but honor those changes, get into flow and know that your baby, regardless of what you're going through, affirm that your baby is gonna get here in an easy, effortless, healthy manner and that your body is capable, that you are loved, you're protected and you're watched and you're divinely created to do this. So thank you guys so much for watching my video and I will see you in the next upload. Peace